All right, guys, I'm back again for sneak peek for the second month in a row. I'm Brittany, product designer at Acryl, and we're going to talk about some small changes that will hopefully make a big impact for your users to find the data that they're looking for um, with updating our search filters. So why are we focusing on this? We've heard a lot of feedback. What are subtypes? And then when you figure out what subtypes are, why are they so far away from types? How do I search for two platforms at once? Okay, I have a lot of terms that are the exact same, but they're in different term groups. How do I know which term I what term I want to filter on? What even is a container? It's not usually not, not always a normal term for somebody to use. And maybe I know exactly what schema is then, but then when I go and browse for that schema, like how do I see all of, and filter through all of the entities and tables inside of it? So we're going to tackle some of these, and then I'll give you even more of a sneak peek into where we're going to make some other changes as well. So switching over to this. So today, uh, I actually am also going to give you a sneak peek into what Chris has pre-recorded for us. So check out his recording after this town hall that Maggie will post. But right off the bat, something that will be coming out soon is when I start searching, and I know exactly that. Uh, maybe that it's in Snowflake. So before even hitting the results page, I can go ahead and add a filter there. Then you'll see some big changes right away. So today our filters are around the left hand side. Now we've cleaned them up and really focused on, you know, first of all, do you want to filter by platform, a domain, type, a glossary term, and added those up to the top here. For types and subtypes, we've added a parent child visualization inside of the types filter. So if you're looking specifically uh, for tables under data sets, let's all combine into one view now. And when you have a lot of options, you can actually start to type it and quickly find the exact filter you're looking for. As you add each type of filter, they'll be up here so you can quickly reset it. Or you can add tables and schemas, for example. You can add a lot of ands here that are not available. And then obviously uh, a lot of you might be using glossary terms or tag, those are still here as well. Um, and so here I say I want to find exactly ones that have the PII tag. And in our 65 results that we have here, there are actually only two tags being used. So I can do that and whittle it down to one. Um, a little bit more detail on this. Uh, so again, here's a little quick view of each of those drop downs. If you have an environment, it'll show. If you're not making use of environment, we won't show that as well, kind of cleaning up the UI. Being able to filter if you have a lot of options and seeing the number of results as you go. And for glossary terms, adding that container level information above it with a hover for you know, those who might have uh, groups upon groups upon groups of, of glossary terms as well. So one question you might be asking is like, well, why did you put the filters on top? Like there's a lot of filters. You have that left-hand bar. We'll explain that, that decision. That seems nuts, right? So here's even your bigger sneak peek really quickly. Some of the problems that we heard seeing is maybe I know exactly the schema that I want to look under, or I like to browse through my platforms, but then I want to filter those results. So by adding the filters here on the top, on the left-hand side, we'll have your ability to quickly jump into your charts, your dashboards, your data sets, or your pipelines, jump into a specific platform, in this case, Redshift, and see, open a database and see the available schemas, and click on a schema and see your results inside of it. So in this right-hand screenshot, I'm filtering by a string, a, plot, a couple of platforms, a type, and then specifically looking inside of a schema. So really quick, that's a quick sneak peek into uh, search filter changes and then even quicker uh, view into what's to come with browse. So if you have any thoughts or questions, feel free to send me a message. Thank you so much, Brittany. Um, and that's also the the browse experience is a, a uh, those are our tentative designs right now. Um, and the outcome of the discovery work that Brittany and I have been doing. Um, so really appreciate the feedback that we're getting from the community. Um, and then there was a question in chat about search and browse for open source. Yes, we will be shipping both of those to open source. The new search filtering experience will come first. Um, that should be ideally, it will, it'll be in early to mid, well, probably mid April. 
Um, and then the new browse experience embedded with that will be a fast follow. Um, so we're hoping, depending on uh, kind of level of complexity, et cetera, uh, we're hoping that'll be in the next uh, six-ish to eight-ish weeks.